Hello and welcome back to the Third Rail. We have a new addition to the collection this week. I just received this absolutely gorgeous passenger train and I thought we should have a first look together. Let's start with a quick model overview as usual. This is a Merklin product, of course. It is set 2864, which represents a 1960s express train with what Merklin calls an historic color scheme. It was released in the 1989 edition of the Merklin Standard Program and it remained in production until 1994. This set is analog. A digital version was also available under model number 2664. Both versions are cosmetically identical. In terms of tooling, only the locomotive body is new for this set. The chassis is identical to the one used for the Merklin 3075 since 1968. The coaches are based on the early 1970s 4091, 2 and 3 for the body tooling, with a different chassis equipped with short coupling, and I think it's the first time Macklin did this, retractable buffers. The set sold roughly for about 400 Deutsche marks, which represented just under 20% or around 20% of the average salary before tax in 1989. Now that would equate to 420 euros in today's money, so that wasn't a cheap set. The items in the set were not available to buy separately. Merklin released another version of the locomotive a bit later on. It was a special model for the Merklin Handler Initiative, which is shortened MHI, which you might know from various catalogues. The model was released in 1991 in two motorization. There was model 3379 in analog and 3679 in digital. Both models also identical, but the version had a different running number, the slightly later 216005-9. Let's move to a few vital statistics. We'll start with the locomotive, which measures 18.2 cm buffer to buffer. That makes it exactly 1 to 87 scale. It is made up of a die-cast chassis and a plastic body. The model is fitted with an electronic reversing unit controlling a three-pole flat collector motor, driving two axles equipped with four traction tires. If we look at the cab, we have triple headlights. These are directional so they change with the direction of travel. And we also have a short coupling. This applies to both cabs, of course. Quick look at the coaches. They are all 27 centimeters in length, giving the fully assembled set an overall length of 127 centimeters. Now let's have a quick overview of the prototype for context. The model represents a pre-production V160, a prototype of a multi-purpose diesel locomotive. The class would become one of the most successful locomotives of the Deutsche Bundesbahn. Let's imagine we are in the mid-1950s. West German reconstruction is in full swing, the rubble has mostly been cleared away, and the young Bundesbahn has been busy re-establishing links between major economic centers. It has also been planning for the future, and it does not include steam power. The technology is no longer economically viable. A large-scale electrification program is underway for the main lines as well as some suburban lines and the company is now taking delivery of the first of many modern brand spanking new electric locomotives. That would be the E10s, the E40s, E41 and E50s. The program will take years to complete, so a fast diesel locomotive has also been commissioned as an interim measure. 
It's the legendary V200 we saw on the channel recently. With the main line taken care of, the time has come to address the remaining thousands of kilometers of regional, suburban and branch lines. Some might be good candidates for future electrification, but for the vast majority, electrification will never be viable. Diesel is therefore the only way to go. The Bundespan determines it needs two types of locomotives. One for light and the other one for medium weight passenger and freight services. A light locomotive is already in service. It's the V80, 10 units of which had been commissioned in 1951 and served as a testbed to prove diesel technology had matured enough. The combination of engine and transmission used in the V80 had been reused for the V200, but the V200 required an additional engine to achieve its performance requirements. Based on this experience, the Bundespan commissions an improved version of the V80 that will become the V100 and a heavier locomotive, our prototype, the V160. In 1956, Krupp is tasked with the design. At first, the intention is to use a layout similar to the one used in the V200. But in the short few years since its introduction, more powerful diesel engines have become available, which would make it possible to power the locomotive with a single unit, at least in theory. If this was possible, this would definitely lower a few overheads. The design is therefore based around a single Maybach V16 unit that delivers just under 2,000 horsepower. The first nine prototypes are built by Krupp and Henschel, then delivered to the Bundespan between 1960 and 1962. The locomotive could reach a maximum speed of 120 km per hour with the ability to pool freight or passenger services. It was equipped with a steam generator for compatibility with the heating systems used by coaches on secondary lines. It came equipped for push-pull operations as well as the ability to be used in dual traction. These capabilities would match the tasks allocated to the BR78, 38, 50 and other classes of steam engines deployed on secondary lines at the time. Ein Mädchen für alles, as they say in German. In English that would translate to a jack of all trades. The design of the cabs quickly earned the locomotive the nickname of Lolo, after actress Gina Lolo Brigida, uh, who was quite famous at the time. Now I'll leave you to guess why, and if it's not immediately obvious, I'd give you a clue and say that there are two very good reasons. The V160 performed very well under operational conditions. There was still one last prototype outstanding, and it was built by Henschel in 1963. This one was delivered with a different cab design, which ended up being the one chosen for production, because it was easier to manufacture on one side, but it was also a bit more aerodynamic, and it looked a bit more modern too. This final package became the most successful family of locomotives of the Deutsche Bundespan, with about 800 units built in several variations over many years. The 10 pre-series locomotives remained in service for about two decades and were withdrawn between 1978 and 1984. Our V160003 is very well known because it has been preserved and kept in working condition. It is owned by the Deutsche Bahn AG and maintained by an association of railway enthusiasts in Lübeck in the north of Germany.
It was built by Krupp and delivered to the Deutsche Bundesbahn in Munich in 1960. There it received its safety certificate and was subsequently allocated to Hamburg Altona. It spent the next 12 years in various depots in the north of Germany, still in the vicinity of Hamburg. In 1968, as with everything else the Deutsche Bundesbahn owned, there was a renumbering exercise during which the locomotive was renumbered to 216003. In 1973, it was moved to the Ruhr region, first to Gelsenkirchen, and a few years later to Oberhausen, where it was finally withdrawn in 1984. Since then, the locomotive took part in many events. It was on display at the DB Museum in Nuremberg for a while before returning to Lübeck, where it is stored today. The locomotive is kept in an operational state, but it is currently missing its safety certification due to lack of financial resources. This completes the overview for today. You'll find credits for the material used in the video as well as links to sources and additional information in the video description as usual. Now let's have a look at my 2864. And here it is. This is a large box, isn't it? The set was sold to me as a nearly new set. So let's see what that means. The box itself is in very good shape. There's nothing to whinge about here. It's a very good start. So let's uh, open this little thing. So we have the original paperwork. The set came with a nice illustrated leaflet about the locomotive. It's a reprint from a magazine. Now you've seen some of the pictures contained in that brochure in the overview we've just finished. Uh, the transparent cover here is intact. Maybe a tiny bit yellowed, but that's a common thing with this type of packaging. Now let's have a look at the models. Oh, looks very good indeed. Yep. Now let's take them out of the box. Oh, and we have all the original protective material still in the bottom of the tray. And the tray itself is also intact. So that's another plus point. Excellent. Right, let me reorganize myself a bit. And he has everything. And it does look very good indeed. So let's uh, have a closer look at the locomotive. So, nothing's broken, scratch, or otherwise damaged. Excellent! There are nice little details everywhere. Oh, I love the cabs, but I'm biased. We have nice inscriptions on the sides. The roof is fine too. Nice details on the top here. Very good. Now let's have a quick look at the chassis. Yeah, that looks pretty new to me. Okay, that's excellent. Now let's have a quick look at the coaches. All fine there too. Nice paint job. We have golden window frames as well. Good. Now the luggage van is nice too. The doors can slide open. And if we look at the chassis, uh, it's common to all the coaches, it's the same everywhere. But uh, here we can see that the buffers are adjustable. There's a little slot and the buffer can uh, slide in there. Uh, excellent. Well, everything looks very good, I'd say. Now, let's move to the layout and see how everything performs. And there we are. Let me rail this beauty. 
I'll use the railing aid this time. I know, it's not very grown up. I think everybody should get one. <laughs> Lovely, I shall get you a bit closer. Right, I'll give it a bit of power. I'll try and test the reverser. I can't hear it. And let's try and move anyway. Yeah, fine. Let's try and uh, change the direction. That's all okay too. So the reverser is working. The lights work forward. And that's the same story backwards. Okay, excellent. Now let's have a quick look at the chassis. Tires first. They look okay. Now let's have a quick peek inside. I know some of you like that. So the uh, body screw for that model is hiding under one of the vent grills on the roof. The grill can just be removed by inserting a little screwdriver in the slot and then very carefully lifting it. And there's our screw. So we'll take it off and then pull the body up, which is not sticking to anything. Excellent. And there we are. So uh, in this uh, model, we have a fully electronic reverser with a relay. Now that's why I could barely hear it or not hear it before. And we have a flat collector motor on the other side. Very old tech in 1989. And everything looks as new as it gets. So I'm going to lubricate everything a bit and then put it back together. Now let's do another quick test. Is it still operational? Yep. Fine. So I'm going to assemble the train now and I'll send it for a slow run in for a few minutes and I'll rejoin you later. So one moment, please. So we're back. The run-in is done. It was absolutely uneventful. And we're ready for the main line. So I'm not expecting any issue here, considering the locomotive is based on model 3075, which is a very good puller. So let's watch it for a round or so. Absolutely no issue. Oh, isn't this set gorgeous? It took years for me to find one and I think this was well worth the wait. I have a feeling it will come out often. This is Merlin royalty in my opinion. So that was it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully enough for you to give it a like 
and maybe even subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks as ever for your support and bye for now.